Okay, guys. So the very first video that we'll take um, that we'll talk about is uh, the 1909 Cabana set. Um, as mentioned in my intro, the Cuban sets were the earliest, and of the earliest Cuban sets, the Cabana set is the first. It is the uh, a set that was issued to commemorate the visit of the Detroit Tigers to the island of Cuba to play against a couple of the local teams, uh, Havana and Almendares. Um, the, the, the Detroit Tiger team in 1909 was not a, a terrible team. In fact, they won the American League pennant. They lost in the World Series. Their record was, I think, 96 and 56. They were absolutely a great team. And at the end of the World Series, they traveled to Cuba. Uh, I think it was November. And they took on the local integrated teams uh, in Cuba. Uh, the Cabanas um, Tobacco um, Company issued some cards, which are absolutely gorgeous. I'll, sh I'll be showing you some here in a minute to commemorate uh, the visit. And unfortunately for collectors, uh, two very important uh, guys on, on the Detroit Tigers did not make the trip. They probably didn't need the cash, frankly. Uh, Sam Crawford and Ty Cobb. So you had the, the um, I think Ty Cobb won the Triple Crown that year. Not that home runs were a big thing, but you know, he was a great ball play, player. And I think basically any other category that he didn't win, probably Sam Crawford won. Uh, doubles or extra race hits, uh, I'm not exactly sure which ones, but he was also another absolute superstar. That said... Uh, Detroit had some excellent pitchers, and it was kind of dead ball era, so you know, you're talking ERAs around two, and the AL uh, leader of, uh, in wins, George Mullen, was on this team. He made the trip to, to Cuba, and also uh, Owen Donnie Bush, who uh, Bill James has as one of the top 50 or so um, shortstops of all time. He was on the team, and he made the trip as well, and they have a card of him. So it's a no-slouch uh, team. It's not the bottom of the basement. They don't have all their stars, but it's a solid major league team that just made it to the World Series and full of, of great players who are used to winning uh, with, with nearly 96 wins in a 152 game season. That's pretty dang impressive. Um, so they went down there and they had 12 uh, exhibition games and they got snuffed. Um, they won four of those games and uh, part of that uh, snuffing and probably all of the the uh, the bad news and publicity that came came along with that kind of uh, incited next year in 1910 um, for them to bring their full team, including Crawford and Cobb, of which there are are cards, and we'll talk about those when I talk about the 1910 punch cards. But for now, let's focus on this amazing Cabanas uh, set. So again, there were it was three teams: the Detroit Tigers. Um, Havana and Almendares. So Cabanas decided to to make um, each have a portrait of each player, and the portrait has um, had different colors. So you know here you're going to see this is the this is a Donnie Bush uh, card, right? And this is uh, his. It's got a gray outline here, and on the back. All of the backs are are the same. They say Cabanas, right? And it says, uh, La mejor manera de formar una preciosa colección de los jugadores de béisbol de los clubes cubanos y extranjeros nos visitan es fumando los afamados cigarros de Cabanas. So these, basically, if you wanted to collect all of our local Cuban guys as well as the foreigners, you needed to smoke Cabanas cigarettes. Great. Not atypical for the time, insert them in a pack of cigarettes, and these particular cards are absolutely just gorgeous. The colors, hopefully you can see that, I see some reflection here on the, the, the camera, but this beautiful gray with a portrait in the back, and again the back, uh, this, this nice blue with the advertisement, and of course you must uh, have smoke Cabanas if you're going to have a, a good time. So. Uh, of that, um, you know, I think the Detroit cards, you can go to my SGC uh, registry and check out scans of most of these cards. Um, so that the Detroit ones are are this gray uh, color. The Habana ones are this beautiful red, right? Here's a Bustamante, right? Again, the backs are the same. I won't continue to show you those. Um, and then the... 
the um, the Almendares cards are is this blue. Okay, so you'll get a little bit of reflection off of the uh, off of this. A couple other very important things uh, to tell you about these the, this particular cards is there's 31 individual cards in the set, and by far the most common ones you can find in the market are the Detroit Tigers ones and the Almendares ones. The Habana ones, for nobody really knows what reason, are pretty rare cards. In fact, many of them are one of ones, uh, meaning that there's only one known copy of them. And, um, and unfortunately for collectors, um, those are some of the most important players because uh, well, I'll, I'll show you some of those here in a second. Um, as far as uh, grading and the the availability of these cards up up through January of of 2017, there were a total of 132 graded copies of all the cards co combined. No single card has you know, I think more than seven, um, and a few have one and a few have two. As far as public sales in 2011, uh, a bunch of these were sold. Um, and, and they ranged from, uh, again, these are not superstar, for the most part, players. They range from, you know, 900, I think, to two to 3,000 per each individual card. Um, the one standout card that was a uh, Habanas card of uh, Bruce Petway, I think, went for something like 21,000. Um, and that was a pretty ugly card, honestly. It had a had a lot of back damage. It was missing a, a piece on the back. So um, these are extremely difficult cards to find um, and they're beautiful and they're the first Cuban issue. And it also relates to one of the very first documented interracial uh, integrated versus a, a, a US professional team um, that was very, very uh, followed both uh, in Cuba and the US. I'll also tell you, there's a few other nuances of these cards. Some of them have two different uh, versions, two nameplates. So I'll show you an example here on the Bustamante card I so showed you a second ago. Here we have two Bustamante cards. They look the same, but if you look you know, down here, you're going to notice that this one says Anguila, shortstop Anguila. Hopefully you can see that. And if you look over here, it just says El Bustamante shortstop. Okay, so basically what um, a few nameplates variations exist. Um, his nickname must have been was the eel, and uh, and and that's why they put it on the card. A lot of a lot of times in Latin America, you wouldn't even know someone's name. They would just always call him by by his nickname or Apollo. Um, so there's a few of those uh, specific things that that are going on in the set. Um, another one that I can show you is the the Tinta Molina, which where you have just Augustine Molina, which is his name, and then the other one, which is Tintin Molina. So, you know, th there's a few of these uh, variations. Um, could there be more? Sure. We just don't have that many copies in, in one specific place. But in addition to those, there are also some, some very key one-of-ones. And this one, Carlos Moran, was uh, a superstar of Asian uh, background, and he. Uh, this is a one of one, beautiful card. Uh, again, you can see closer up scans on my SGC registry. Um, if you you know have have been out there, PSA I think has just a handful of these um, graded, very few. Luis Padron, who was also an absolute uh, superstar, many thought that he was. Uh, the very first Cuban to uh, to play in the major leagues. I think he was invited to uh, a camp. There's there's not a lot of proof that this actually happened, but this guy rocked it, and he was uh, he was an absolute superstar. And he this is the only known uh, card of him uh, besides uh, a punch that comes out in in the following year. Again, there's 31 of these cards. I'm not going to show them all to you. I'll just show um, the other. Uh, and another important one of one, which is uh, Augustine Parpetti. Just an amazing, amazing uh, card. And these are just amazing to see these. And, and SGC 40, which is VG, is just shocking, right? You just don't see these types of cards uh, in this shape at all. 
Um, all this stuff is just unbelievable. And of course, you know, I don't want to um, to to forget about that. This is my pet way. Remember, I told you one one uh, sold before. This is my pet way. Sorry for the reflection there. Um, and it's an SGC 40. And, uh, and so, you know, Pat Way was one of the catchers. He was rumored to have thrown out, um, Ty Cobb the, in the next year. Um, I don't, I don't, haven't found any real proof of that in any box scores or anything that says that happened, but that was a local, um, that, that was a, uh, reported phenomena that happened there. Now, the other card that you may or may not have heard of, especially if you're a, a Hall of Fame, um, you know, collector, rookie collector, is Pete Hill. And and Pete Hill was not a name known by many people who didn't collect Negro League, uh, you know, cards and and autographs and whatnot until he was uh, recently elected in the uh, the latest round. I think what was that, 2005, 2006. And this is his only rookie card if you want to call it that um you know it's an sgc 30 they have him as pedro hill clearly uh, on his face there's only one copy known so you know this is you know not to steal the fun the thunder of all of these new league videos that we'll be doing this is probably the second maybe the first most expensive negro league baseball card out there uh given there's one Given that it comes from such an important set, and given that he is obviously a Hall of Famer, this is a very, very key card uh, in in my collection and in the Cabana set. So, you know the again highlights: thirty-one cards, Detroit Tigers missing a couple of the key guys, and some amazing Negro Leaguers in uh, in in the Habana set. Um, the Habana set is much more difficult to find than the Almendares. In Almendares, we have uh, Rafael Almeida, who together with uh, Marsans are considered to be the first Cubans in the in the uh, in the in the major leagues. So that's a that's a great card, very very uh, sought after card. And um, and you know in general, you know they continue. Here's a here's another couple of the here's a Cabrera card, right? And the Cabrera here's one with his nickname El Pajaro. So are there going to be more, more variations? I'm sure there are, but at least the ones that myself and other collectors that are in this particular space, uh, we've only found uh, four of those uh, nameplate variations for now. I'm sure there are more. Um, we also wonder there's more, even though the Havana cards are more difficult to find, there are actually more individual players there. So we wonder if, in fact, more Almendares uh, cards exist than than what we've seen uh through now but as of now we have a total of 31 individual uh cards and it includes the pete hill rookie it also includes the parpetti um rookie or first card the moran first card the um the petway you know first card rookie many people consider him to be in the very short list if they were to 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 allow new negro leaguers into the uh, Hall of Fame that he would be one of the few people to uh, to take a spot. So um, there's the Cavania set, unbelievable, great set. Um, they they're just special special cards, and these um, are the only non photographic cards from Cuba um, until we get up until the to the 1940s. So all of the other ones are are photographs, which I personally love. But the art on these, the feeling on these is, is, is just tremendous. So uh, hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you have any other questions or I didn't cover something that uh, was important. Thank you. Bye.